Hey guys, and uh, this is going to be a little overview of how I've got my um, Intuos Pro uh, graphics tablet set up with Blender. Um, so for those of you not familiar, Blender uses a lot of shortcuts and keys um, for the navigation and, and other features. And what I want to do is replicate some of those shortcuts on the um, accessories uh, buttons that are on the side of my Intuos Pro. So if I open up my Wacom tablet here you'll see that there's these various buttons that can be assigned. There's also the touch ring that can be assigned and we can create these radial menus, which are quite useful. And we can assign a specific application. So you can see here for Blender, I go over to my grip pen. I've, um, see the default would be um, for a double click and a right click for these buttons. But if I go over into Blender, you can see that I've made it a middle click and a right click. So uh, Blender was really designed to be used with a three mouse button plus a scroll wheel. So that's really how it's optimized for use. So my touch ring has become the scroll wheel here. When the first light is lit and I use that, that will be my scroll wheel. So my grip pen, I've got my uh, left mouse button, which is the click. I've got my right mouse button. And then the top button here is the middle. The eraser I'm just going to leave for now. I'm not really using that in Blender unless you're doing some sculpting then maybe you're going to use the erase button but for now um, I'll just leave it as it is. And uh, mapping, this is for mapping our um, screen to the uh, our um, tablet to the screen so whether you want it to go all the way up to the edges or not. So you can assign different monitors and proportions and tablet area, whether you want to use a portion of the tablet or whether you want to use the whole tablet for the area. I'm going to use the whole tablet for my screen um, rather than just inside of these markers here. Um, so let's go over now to our functions and we'll go into how I've got this set up. So these buttons down the side here, if you go over to the default, it opens up things like um, uh, your settings, so you can access this menu. You know, if we hit the settings here, it brings up this, which is basically a settings menu where we can then, you know, quickly access different preferences. And that would just be a shortcut to bring us to here. You can turn on and off precision mode, which allows us to more precisely move. Um, display toggle. If you've got multiple monitors set up, you can toggle this between different displays. Um, shift key, command key, option, and um, pan and scroll. But um, I don't really need. Uh, those in Blender. So in Blender I've set up my own customized um, shortcut keys. So the first one will open a radial menu which we'll get to later. The next one is a keystroke and the keystroke I've set is um, the uh, control L I think that's uh, control L and that um, allows us to like uh, select uh, sorry um, this keystroke here is let me clear that. That should be E for extrude there. And this keystroke here is loop cut. And that is um, shift R. So shift R gives us a loop cut. Um, when we're in our edit mode, then we've got shift. And then I've got X, Y, and Z. So the X key has two purposes. If I'm um, extruding or moving an object around, it will lock it to the X axis. And if I'm not, then the X key will actually act as a delete button. Um, so it's got dual purpose. Uh, Z, again, will move us around the Z axis or will switch us into wireframe mode and Y will move us around the Y axis only. Now you can set up these radial menus. So the top one takes me to these radial menus and I've got sub menus for some of these. So first one here is views. Because I'm using a MacBook Pro, I don't have a numpad, a number pad. So um, I want to be able to quickly access um, the front, the right, the side, the top, the left, the bottom, the active camera. So I created that as its own submenu. Um, edit, this is a shortcut. Basically, instead of having to go down to these edit menus down here. Um, object, again, this brings up various object menus. So I'll show you those when we go over into Blender itself. So let's go over here. And if I use my um, middle mouse button, which would be the top button on my pen, you can see I can spin around my scene. If I hold down the shift key, which uh, remember we assigned on our um, tablet, the shift key would be um, 
this button here on your tablet. So if I hold that down, it allows me to then move around like this. So we can spin or we can pan. And if I use the scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out. So that is all my navigation is available here directly on my trackpad, which is kind of really useful. Um, so uh, my second button down here will switch me um, between object mode and edit mode, I believe. Uh, that's correct. Toggle edit mode. So this keystroke here. Toggle edit mode, that will be the tab button. Let's clear that. Tab, so that's toggle edit mode. And then our extrude is E. Yes, that's all correct. Uh, so if I hit this button here, that will toggle me into edit mode. You see it changes, and we can go back into object mode. You see it changes down here. So I can go into edit mode, open up the radial menu, go to edit, and then I've got all of my edit menus. And that's the same as going down to here and You've got more menus here, not all of them have shortcuts, but um, the ones which I most commonly use are what I've set to my radial menu. So if I select that edge, um, we'll go to our radial menu, and if we go to the edge menu, there we go. Oops. Edge menu. So now I can, you know, I can mark sharps. That would mark that as a sharp edge, even if I've got smoothed um, shading turned on. Um, there's other things you can do here. Uh, edge loops, so I can select an edge loop here. I can begin to add edge loops in. Try again. Edge menu and edge loops. It's not allowing me to do it. Hmm. Sorry, that's for selecting edges. Not, not. Uh, I was thinking of loop cuts. Wait a moment. Uh, let's go back over here. So, um, in the edge menu, edge loops will select a um, a loop of edges. So if I go into edge mode here, I select, uh, let's create something different. Hold on. Let's just create a circle. Whoops. A circle. A sphere. Yeah. So there's my sphere here. So if I select that and I come to my edge menu and go to edge loops, it will select a loop around there. So then if I hold down the shift, and do the same again, edit menu, uh, edge menu, and edge loops. There. If I want to select all of those loops in that direction, edit menu, and edge rings, and that will select all of the rings. And then I can move my object around however I like. And that would uh, you know, not move the top point, the top point will stay where it is because I've got all those edges selected. Uh, so that's basically how these menus work. I've got these views here, so I can snap to the front view. I could go to the right view. I can go through to the top view, so I can navigate around my scene also using these shortcuts, which is also a useful feature. So um, the other keys then that I had set up, we've got uh, extrude and loop cut. So again, if I, uh, I'm in edit mode here, Let's select this object. Um, oh yeah, we've got the X, Y, and Z. So obviously if I hit the X key, that's the um, delete. Let's create a new sphere. Let's zoom in on this. Um, into edit mode and loop cuts. So that would be this button here, and that brings me into my loop cut mode, so I can, you know, create loop cuts. Um, and then the other button is for extrude. So those are my extrude and loop cut keys. I can grab faces. I can move them around. If I'm moving something, I can lock it to a certain axis by using my X, Y, Z keys. And of course then I can extrude it. Like so. Again, we can lock it to whatever axis we want to move it around on. So that is how I have my Intuos um, Pro set up 
to work with Blender and you could set this up in the same way or whatever keys you use the most. You know, if you primarily do a lot of modeling and sculpting, then you'll probably want to use whatever shortcuts you most often use there. I do have the brush size set up with my scroll wheel so I can change my brush size before I grab things and move them around. I switch into brush size mode there, I can make it smaller so I can grab small sections or I can make it bigger so I can grab bigger sections. So uh, depending on how you use Blender, you know, if you use it mostly for sculpting like this, then uh, you can set up your shortcut keys to be whatever you most often are using. So that's how, uh, yeah, I have my Intuos Pro set up. It's a uh, very useful um, graphics tablet. I find it very in intuitive to use um, and, you know, makes Blender a, a very nice software and uh, I find the navigation easier using um, the tablet rather than using the touchpad on my MacBook Pro.